Today, I am going to explain an American comedy drama film called An American Pickle. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins in the year 1919, in a place called Schlupsk in Eastern Europe. Herschel Greenbaum is a struggling Jewish laborer who works as a ditch digger. His job is tiresome and earns him little to no money. Most of the money he earns, he spends on buying new shovels, which break frequently. Herschel narrates that his life is tough, but that is only until he meets the love of his life, Sarah, for the first time. By buying her a golden fish from the market, he wins her over and the two become friends. They have a lot in common, like the fact that both of their parents were murdered by Russian Cossacks. The pair's greatest wish is to be able to afford their own gravestone one day. Times were simpler back then, huh? Bonding over murder and dreaming of death. A few months later, they get married, hoping for a peaceful life together. However, their plans are ruined when the Russian Cossacks attack the village right after the wedding ceremony. To escape their life of living in fear, the couple moves to America. They are frequently called anti-Semitic slang, but Herschel claims that the Americans treat them way better than the Russians did. He gets a job at a pickle factory, where he earns a nickel for every 10 rats he kills. The couple works hard and finally buys two graves so that they can be together forever. Not long after that, Sarah gets pregnant with their first child, but everything changes when, one day, Herschel falls into a vat of pickles, just as the factory is condemned for health reasons. The vat is covered, and he is stuck inside it for the next 100 years. Time passes, but no one comes to look for him, until two youngsters enter the factory and open the vat's lid that was accidentally knocked out by their drone. Even after a 100 years of being stuck inside of it, Herschel is alive and well, perfectly preserved by the brine. His story becomes the talk of the city, and a convention is held to explain how he was able to survive. The scientists provide a very believable explanation, which the media accepts. Following that, Herschel is taken to the hospital for a checkup, and is found to be in perfectly good condition, except for his anger issues. On running a background check, the doctors find out that all of Herschel's descendants are dead, except for his great-grandson, Ben. After they contact him, they find out that he lives in Brooklyn and is more than happy to pick up his great-grandfather. Ben meets Herschel and is surprised to see that the two look almost identical. That's right, since James Franco has been cancelled, Seth Rogen now has to star in movies with himself. When Herschel steps out of the building for the first time, he is mesmerized by the skyscrapers and the vehicles. Everything has changed since he last saw New York. Ben is excited to be able to show his great-grandfather all of the new inventions. When they reach Ben's apartment, Herschel is even more shocked. Used to living in poverty, he thinks that the place is massive and luxurious. And honestly, for New York, he's not wrong. Who did Ben have to kill to get this place? Ben welcomes him to live there as long as he wants, but Herschel thoughtfully says he doesn't want to be a burden on him. Herschel's excitement only gets bigger when he gets to drink seltzer water, a drink that was reserved for royalty in his time. Ben makes Alexa play an old song, and the two dance together. After settling down, Herschel asks Ben what he does for work, assuming that he might be a doctor or a lawyer. He is visibly confused when Ben says he is a freelance app developer. Ben explains that he has been developing an app called Bootbop for the past five years and is very passionate about it. It is a service that checks companies' ethics to help the consumer choose whether to buy their products. Herschel sees no pictures of family on the walls, so he asks Ben about this. Ben shows him a family photo album, which makes Herschel emotional. He sees Sarah's picture and finds out that he had a son named Mort. On being asked about his parents, Ben becomes uncomfortable. He says that they passed away in an accident. The following day, they go to visit the graves of their family, and to Herschel's horror, the cemetery is in shambles. Seeing his wife's poorly kept tombstone, he can't help but cry. Some workers are putting up a billboard of Russian vodka right on top of their graves. This reminds Herschel of the Cossacks who killed his parents and loved ones back in Shlupsk. An enraged Herschel asks them to put it down, but they do not oblige, so he assaults them. Ben tries to stop him but gets beaten up in the process. This results in both of them being arrested. Ben spends a large sum of money and bails them out. Herschel then convinces Ben to finally message his investor friend about his app. He responds immediately, so Ben goes to a meeting with him. But he is devastated to find out that the investors aren't interested in him because of his newly minted criminal record. He returns home and blames Herschel for making his life go downhill. 
Herschel doesn't understand Ben's ideas and claims that they should start a pickle business instead. In a fit of rage, Ben says that Sarah would be ashamed of him if she were alive. At that moment, Herschel vows to build a pickle empire and make his dead relatives proud by raising enough money to cut down the billboard. He storms out of the apartment after calling Ben a dishonor to their family name. At first, he goes to the grocery store to buy cucumbers, but they are too expensive. While wandering around, he notices that the garbage bin outside of the store has packed cucumbers in it. He brings them with him and, in a similar fashion, collects all the necessary ingredients from dumpsters around the city. Using a shopping cart, salt, and rainwater, he is finally able to make the brine for the pickles. Following that, he puts up a tiny pickle stand by the side of the road. He sells his first jar for $4 to a couple. Since he hasn't added any preservatives and is selling them at a lower price than the grocery store, the number of customers increases. He also asks them to bring the jars back after they are finished. This way, the people believe his business is environmentally friendly. His customers start to post about him on social media, which grows his business exponentially. Herschel's old-fashioned charm is hipster gold. Soon, Ben also finds out about Herschel's local pickle business that everyone is talking about. While he struggles to create ideas for his new app, he is told that Herschel's business is a massive hit. This makes him jealous. One day, he calls the health department and files a complaint about Herschel using products found in trash bins to create his pickles. This causes his business to shut down and he is fined $12,000. Herschel is left right where he started, without any resources. Two of his faithful customers advise him to hire interns, since he wouldn't have to pay them. Herschel is inspired by the idea, even though he thinks it is similar to slavery. Herschel is wrong about this. At least slaves were provided with food and a place to sleep. He hires a group of interns to brine and package the pickles. Soon, they are using proper ethical methods to make them, and are approved by the health department. The interns also help him sell the pickles on a larger scale, making the business quickly go back up. In no time, Herschel earns enough money to purchase the billboard and take it down. In the meantime, Ben sees that the people who were supposed to invest in his app are now wanting to invest in Herschel's business. To proclaim his victory, Herschel brings the billboard back to Ben's apartment. He says that he wants to help Ben because at the end of the day, they are family. But Ben is not fond of the idea and just wants the man to go away. As they chat, Herschel comments how the Polish men are stupid. This gives Ben another idea on how he can end the pickle business. He suggests Herschel create a Twitter account. That evening, with an intern's help, Herschel tweets controversial statements about women, religion, and homosexuality. The following day, people swarm before his shop and protest against his ideas, urging everyone to boycott his pickle business. His interns also leave his side and join the protesters. Even after this, Herschel stays firm in his opinions. As time passes, he earns support from conservative groups who see him as an icon of free speech and empowerment. He even gets selected to appear for a debate with a college professor on the subject of ethics. At first, his statements about women in general are seen as bold opinions. But then, a disguised Ben from the audience asks him about his thoughts on Christianity. Herschel proceeds to say that the Virgin Mary invented Christianity to hide the fact that she had sexual relations. He calls everyone who believes in Jesus an idiot. Because of the comment, the people who were on his side until now chase him down the streets of New York, wanting to kill him for disrespecting their religion. He manages to survive by hiding in an alleyway. That night, he sees a news report about protests happening all across America to boycott him once and for all. Authorities start to dig up his past, wanting to deport him back to Eastern Europe. Moreover, because of the outdated filing system in the storage facility, the paperwork for Herschel's arrival cannot be located. This gives the authorities an excuse to revoke his citizenship. He is declared a fugitive illegal alien, and the people are asked to report to the police if they see him. With no way out, Herschel goes to his only family, Ben, for help. Not wanting to return to Shlupsk, he says that he will move to Canada and start a business there. Ben reluctantly agrees to help him for the final time. The two drive to the Canadian border and walk through the woods to illegally enter the country. On their way, Ben accidentally cuts his palm and Herschel tears a piece of his clothes to bandage the wound. At night, he hugs his great-grandson to keep him warm. Although Ben has said vicious things to him, Herschel still considers him family. The following morning, they finally reach the border, but have to hide when they are almost spotted by Border Patrol. 
While chatting, Ben feels bad for Herschel and confesses that he was the one who asked him the question about Christianity because he wanted to sabotage the pickle business. Ben hopes that Herschel will forgive him, but he is punched in the face instead. He falls unconscious, and the commotion attracts the Border Patrol's attention. Herschel hides and finds Ben's razor and clothes in a bag. He quickly thinks of a way to escape, shaves his beard, and disguises himself as Ben. The officers arrest Ben, thinking he is Herschel, while Herschel himself is let free because he has Ben's ID. Following that, Ben is put on trial, but his case is considered a joke when he pleads that he is not Herschel. Eventually, he is sent to Shlupsk instead of his great-grandfather. He is alone and cold in a town filled with strangers who do not speak English. He tries to talk to people, asking them for a place he can spend the night in. He ends up in a synagogue and decides to stay there. Meanwhile, Herschel begins to feel awful for his great-grandson. He goes to his apartment and looks through the family photo album. While reminiscing about the old days, he finds a drawing that Ben had made of his parents as a kid. It is only then that Herschel finds out Boop and Bob were pet names that Ben gave his parents. He realizes that Ben had always wanted to honor his parents and feels terrible that he misjudged him. Following that, the man decides to go to Shlupsk and bring Ben back home. Meanwhile, in Shlupsk, Ben is asked by the people of the synagogue to perform prayer and pay respect to the dead family members. He gets emotional during the prayer, but it makes him feel a lot lighter afterward. To his surprise, Herschel appears in front of him and apologizes for his actions. He says that Ben is exactly what he wanted his descendants to become and claims his parents must be proud of him. The pair reconcile and go to a lake that used to be Sarah's favorite spot. They discuss starting a pickle business together, where they can pickle more than just cucumbers. Ben offers to create a website for their company, through which they can sell worldwide. The two finally return to Brooklyn and pay a visit to Sarah's grave. In the final scene, they pray together in the honor of their dead family members. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.